Hi, uh, Adam. Um, and I, uh, a little bit about me, for a first I understand kind of where, where I'm coming from in this whole discussion. It's, um, I, uh, I'm from the U.S. I just moved to uh, Taiwan like two months ago, so a lot of this stuff is, um, you'll see, it's kind of in this sort of rushed, confused, sort of um, very not totally thought out place that I've been in for the past year, um, but I actually really like it that way. And I, I founded this firm called Pilotway about a year and a half ago, um, and it's kind of a multidisciplinary but heavier on the architecture and um, interiors and, and furniture sort of side of things, um, with a potential um, move more into products and, and other realms if, if it happens. Um, but this, this first image is actually kind of important to where, where we started and, and what this whole sort of endeavor is about, um, and a lot of the subsequent things you'll see kind of kind of fall under the same realm. Um, that light is just something I own, but that stand is something I made for it. And the stand is actually super cheap. It was actually made of scraps. Um, it's just scrap wood and some zip ties. And it was, it was kind of made in this mindset of doing something very quickly, very fast, and about making something that you could stand back, look at, you know, take stock of, change if you need to. Um, but, but having this sort of like impermanence to it. Um, and I think those, those sort of, uh, that mindset is, is important to, to what we do. Um, and thinking about making, you know, and for us, making is, is essential. It's, it's pretty much critical to this whole, this whole thing. Um, you know, I don't like to think of it as a, as a digital firm or a conceptual firm. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a place to get your hands dirty and get, get things figured out by, by actually producing three-dimensional pieces. So. These guys have actually been a huge influence on me in my career and, and a lot recently over the past couple of years. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've done a lot of work with Nike in the past year and a half. Um, and they've been really interesting as a company and sort of influential to me because they take a lot of, of, um, a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of creativity to, to play. Um, you know, if you know anything about the company, they, they, they have this sort of development area called the kitchen. And it's basically there for people to make things and to fail, to experiment, and to, to keep going and keep, keep playing with, with whether it's a material or whether it's an idea or um, whether it's a, just a, 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 you know, a detail. Um, so, so, you know, I'm trying to a lot of time like, Sort of thinking in those terms of, of just innovation through trial and error, and innovation through failure, and just innovation through making, because I think that process is uh, you know, is critical, and I think these guys do it really well. And I think you know they've, they've had some some pieces that are shown up here which have been very successful, um, and some other pieces that have just failed miserably, and and they're okay with that, and that's actually how they learn, and that's how they get better at what they do. Um, and I think there's a lot to be taken from that. And actually, most of the projects that are going to see after this are kind of failures in their own way, but that's kind of how we'll get. Um, this first one is is kind of goes back to the first slide, which is is something that was taken from a very quick quick place of, of necessity. Um, I had uh, I had moved to Portland and I needed a couch in my apartment. I had no furniture, and I had facilities to make one. And I had a friend donate me some old climbing rope. So I thought, you know, what can, what can we do with, with rope as a support structure? I never played around with it before. I wanted to experiment. Um, so, you know, drilled some holes, threaded some rope, and made a couch out of it. Um, you know, by, by most measures, this project worked pretty well. I guess it, it didn't fall down. Um, you know, it, it, it looked pretty good for the most part, but it, it was really just an evolutionary step in the process. It was, it was not meant to be a final design. 
Um, and it's also, it has so many places where it needs to be improved upon. Um, but, you know, I think this sort of catapults the, the, the thinking that when you're, when you're designing digitally, um, everything looks great. You know, everything is perfect. You know, when it's rendered out, it's amazing. Um, and everything stands up and everything, you know, is, is the best that it can be. But it's when you start to actually, like, build things, um, and whether it's, a, whether it's a model or whether it's a, a full-scale um, production piece, it's really when you start to see flaws, you start to see um, uh, surprises even. You know, things that, things that you didn't think were going to be that interesting turn out to be even more so than what you thought. Um, so, you know, this is one of, was one of those pieces. Um, and you'll see a lot of, a lot of things after this, which are furniture-based, which is kind of where, where I am right now. Um, in terms of, of pilot ways, but a lot of the, uh, the projects are are on this smaller scale, and and they are furniture pieces because I think that's uh, for me right now it's, it's a really interesting piece of design. Um, you know, there's the interface portion of it is actually uh, interesting to talk about tonight, which is not something that is maybe always considered. It's more just like scale for, for um, you know, whether it's economic sake or whether it's uh, material sake, you know, not everyone can just go out and build their own house, um, but someone can go out and build their own chair. Um, but, you know, we don't always think about the materials in the chair or, or how you, you know, the angles or how you sit in it and what, what's comfortable and what isn't. But, um, you know, furniture really, really addresses all of those issues and it, it's very tactile in that way of, of uh, you notice as soon as something isn't comfortable, and you notice as soon as something isn't um, isn't right, or when it is right, and you really you really want to be there for a while in that piece. Um, so, um, doing a lot with furniture right now because of those issues, I think it's it's really it's very immediately engaging. Um, that that architecture isn't for me right now. Um, so. That's not to say that we don't draw and you know, we don't build models, we don't think about these things in, in other scales and other ways. Um, you know, everything is, is absolutely critical. Um, every part of it is, is really important to what we do. Um, but for us, there, there is something that sort of weighs the, the, the full scale and the physical more so than, than maybe the other parts of it. Um, that here. Um, this was a, a small project for a friend that uh, was for a trade show booth. Um, and the, the booth didn't end up looking anything like this. But, but we had the space to actually lay out a 10 by 10 foot booth um, on the shop floor and, and start to play around with, you know, what are the possibilities here? What do full scale, what does what a real bike look like in here? Um, the, the trade show was for a uh, a bike maker, a uh, frame builder in the U.S. Um, so it was important to, to really understand how the size of, of the bicycle itself and then what sort of space people would need to walk around it would be. Um, so being able to, to look at these things in three dimensions at full scale is, is really critical to what we do and what I think is important um, in terms of, in terms of our, our uh, our progression. Um, this is what the what the booth ended up looking like. Um, basically, nothing like what was in the last slide, but um, you know, it was, it was still very much about displaying um, displaying devices, displaying those objects. Um, lighting became really important in this whole thing, um, and then also just just being able to experience something in multiple dimensions. So so. You're not only seeing it from the side or from the front, but able to, to walk around something completely uh, was ended up being really important in, in the way this was sort of was set up. Um, you know, it's, it's a small project, basically did it for nothing, but, but it was a really fun one because it just allowed a lot of these smaller um, smaller ideas to, to be played out, which you don't always get to do uh, in the sale of a piece of furniture. Build a lot of stuff because it's fun um, and because it's stupid, which is also a really in, 
important thing to do, I think. Um, this was part of a different project, a much, much bigger project, but um, I had actually designed this 3D printed, very cool little clamshell magnet thing to hold um, underwear. It was for a laundry store in LA. And, um, you know, it looked great, it worked, worked really well, but it didn't have the sort of tactile sense that the client wanted. You know, that she wanted something that felt better in people's hands and um, felt better in her hands. Because, you know, what she was displaying felt like it needed to be elevated even more. So we had a bunch of wood lying around, um, and we fashioned by hand all of these tiny little magnet holders. Um, probably five or six hundred of them. Um, burned off a lot of fingernails and fingerprints along the way. But sometimes you just sort of have to do those things because you know that's it's what makes the project really stand out. You know, it's, it's what makes it important. Um, and for that project in particular, you know, that's that's the piece that she walks by every day, you know, when she's in the store and she sees and she smiles at it. And, and when you know, clients come in, they notice those things. And you know, just just thinking about the user base, user interface that way, of just just something that that feels good and feels better than, than maybe a 3D printed or a or um, a laser cut piece. Not that those like we introduce those um, those sort of technologies and those those materials all the time. Um, but but always just sort of considering like what's what's the right thing for the right job. Um, this is some newer stuff that I kind of just finished before I moved, um, and it's a couple more furniture pieces that are, it's have a, a few different points of inspiration. Um, they're, they're actually from a, they're starting a series uh, of pieces that are wedding gifts. Um, for some friends that I owe a wedding gifts to for a long time ago. Um, but a couple of my biggest inspirations in this whole furniture world is, is uh, the modernist stuff from France, from the US, um, from the 30s, 40s, 50s, um, whether it be uh, you know, the East or you know, people like Jean Pervé. Um, but for this kind of stuff, I also really wanted to kind of take my own um, interpretation to it. And you, know, you can see on the, the image on the left, um, the lamp used a uh, sort of thin round steel tube. And that was you know, very, very important to that, that sort of, that, to that lamp. Um, and also to a lot of the, a lot of the style back then um, was that material. And I wanted to look at it in a, a way that was interesting to me now, which which also has to do with sort of bicycle fabrication um, and just a method of delivery. You know, it actually has nothing uh, structural, nothing like important to do other than it's it's just kind of a beautiful detail thing, um, where you're joining these two tubes by a brass um, sort of build up instead of a well. So it was, you know, again, just kind of like working in the shop, figuring things out as you go, um, having a having a rough idea, but not not entirely knowing um, what's going to turn out. Um, I think that's that for for me is is kind of a, a fun direction and a fun place to be in, where I have a good idea of the end result, but I don't really know. Um, where it's totally going to be because you might find out through the first or the third prototype that, that something just doesn't hold the right way or it doesn't um, doesn't look you know the way that you want it to. Um, but I think the, the image in the middle is probably the most indicative of, of how I like to work, which is the sort of back and forth. Um, you know, a laptop on top of a welder um, really kind of speaks speaks to what, what we try to do of, uh, you know, balancing the digital and the physical and, um, 
you know, constantly updating this to this to this sort of loop of, of well, the model the model needs a tweak, or the, the physical needs a tweak, and, and you sort of just bounce back and forth between these two, and it's not this linear process at all. So this is one of the, the pieces that came out of that um, the coffee table with a, a metal frame. Um, and it's, a, it's a pretty analog sort of piece. It's an analog way of making it. Um, but it was, it was for a good friend that, that, that was kind of like their style. So what they sort of needed, I guess. Uh, in my mind, but we also wanted to introduce some sort of storage to it. So, um, you see the image on the right hand is uh, kind of this start of what I call this belly, um, which turned into a little bit more. But, you know, introduce a, a, another element to, to the design. So you can see how the final piece ended up, um, ended up making the the belly portion of it out of industrial felt um, for a couple reasons. One, it has a, has a really nice hand feel. Um, it also is fairly economical and it's also pretty easy to work with. Um, you know, being, being very much about, about how things are, are worked and what, what materials are used in what places, um, especially for a question like this where it was, it was all pretty much done by hand. Um, you know, this, this, the belt piece was, was stitched onto the frame by hand um, because that was kind of the only way we could figure out how to do it. Um, and then with the, the rosewood veneer top, kind of a, a, a nod back to the, to the ease use of rosewood in a lot of their pieces. And then you can see some of the details uh, leather hinges for the top, leather poles, um, and then you kind of see the Raised frame poking up through, through the bottom of the belly there. Um, I thought it turned out to be a pretty good piece. It's, it was definitely a, an experience um, playing around with some different materials that I hadn't used before, um, especially in that combination. So it was, it was a fun project to do. Uh, here's the other piece that's come out of this series so far. Uh, it's a little bit more straightforward. It's a uh, sort of a conference table or desk for another friend. Um, same idea, the series is going to be pretty much in this material palette. Um, Harkening back to, those, to the, the earlier inspiration, but so kind of done in a, a little different formal approach. Um, it's got a Corian top, a, uh, a walnut frame, solid wood, and then the, uh, the filled raised legs again. Some of the details there, brass screws uh, to kind of tie it back to the brass. Uh, and then you can see my really horrible braids there at the, the joint. Um, and again, this is it's a project that, that is, it was really all about the making of it. It had nothing, almost nothing to do with, with the formal approach to it. It had nothing to do with the the way that it sort of needed to function, even. Um, you can make a table out of a lot of things. It was, it was really just about creating this thing, using these materials, and letting the materials drive it, and letting the techniques drive it. Um, and just sort of like seeing how it, how it comes together on its own. Um, because with, if, if you play around with metal enough, you'll realize that it's got sort of a life of its own, and, and it won't always work the way you want it to. Um, which is, is kind of fun. But I will wrap everything up by coming back to, to, to Nike and some other guys um, and kind of looking, showing you guys where some of the stuff's headed in the future, um, at least with what we're doing. Uh, the project up on the top of the left has been pretty important to to us recently, um, in terms of, of using again the technique, um, which in this terms is many, and how that sort of 
has really changed what is possible, or at least the way that people have thought about knitting. Um, and really, optimization. You know, I think that, that when, you're, when you're using this, this technique to make a hat, you don't really necessarily think about it needs to fit tighter over your ears versus over you know, a different part of your head. But when you're trying to make a shoe out of it that needs to support your foot in different ways in different places, um, you start to think about it differently. And I think what we're going to do in the future is, is think about that in terms of furniture and, and how you can sort of use that same idea to uh, to incorporate structure versus um, you know flexibility. And then again with um, you know laser cutting and 3D printing is, is the same idea of this, this optimization, which is really interesting in using techniques and tools to. Um, sort of change or progress or, or think differently about how um, how a surface or how a, a piece can be can be made. Um, so that's kind of like where we're where we're going. Um, and it's it's you know it's always this balance of, of of these digital tools versus the the more analog and more traditional approaches. Um, which I think will always be there and always um, always be present in our work, at least. Um, I think that, that balance and the again the, the tactile nature of, of a lot of traditional materials that need to either be reworked using digital tools or or um, just incorporated next to uh, some higher tech materials. Um, finding that balance is really important for us. So. That's what is going on in, in this side of the world. And I also have a lot of stuff we need to do and figuring things out around here. So um, I don't really know when all this is going to happen, but it will happen someday. Thank you very much. Any questions for Kyle? Okay. The floor is open. Yeah, we've got. Do you think your work will change? I didn't tell but do you feel like you've been somebody? Uh, yes. Um, so far, it's been materially. Yeah. Um, it's just finding, finding materials, finding the people to work with those materials is already different. Um, but I think, you know, I think the, the general approach will, will stay the same. It's just going to be, it's just going to be a kind of a relearning process. Um, so I think the foundation you know, of this kind of like light and fast type approach for, for always sort of balancing the, the, the full scale mock up with, with the digital side, I think that will never change. Um, I think it's just maybe, maybe some of the materials will change, maybe some of the Formal aspects of change, but yeah, there's some differences. Step two, four. Mm -hmm. Anyone have a question? You want to go ahead? You want? Okay, bye. Oh, you okay. okay. oh. okay. oh. okay. oh. okay. 有没有什么地方比较不了解，或者是想问直接问设计师的？后面要做下一个。OK， <笑>那我们现在前面先讨